everybody, Big Anklevich here with another ankle cast. Ankle cast number four coming at you live from my car on my drive home. It's on my drive home because um, on my drive to work today, I was talking, I had my tablet out and I was talking into the microphone and everything, thinking that I was recording an ankle cast, but it turns out that it was not recording and when I got to work and tried to hit stop well it was already stopped because it never started and I was so frustrated um, I would bought this uh, Bluetooth headset that I hoped would work in conjunction with my tablet the good thing was it was cheap it was only like 10 bucks because it was on super sale or whatever and I figured hey I can handle 10 bucks so I got it I tried it out and it acted like it was doing stuff it connected to the tablet and all that but when I would try and record with it it gave me no sound whatsoever so for the time being I will continue to just talk into the built-in microphone on the tablet um, unfortunately for me I never unchecked the setting that said that I was doing Bluetooth recording. And so this morning when I hit record and I started talking, well, it wasn't recording. It was looking for the Bluetooth thing. And so, yeah, I got nothing. So here I am back with another try at uh, the ankle cast. Unfortunately, it's going to be inferior because as everyone probably knows, it's always better the first time you write something or do something, act something, record something, whatever it is, and if you accidentally delete it or don't get it right, well, shoot, you know, it always turns out to be a more uninspired second time around. Hopefully maybe the eight hours of space in between this morning's and this evening's versions will make it not so uninspired. Um, I don't know if that the earlier one was inspired. I don't know that this podcast can be inspired at all, but, uh, you know, whatever. Um, so what has been going on? It's been a while since I had my last ankle cast. It's been like two weeks or something since the last time I ankle casted. And, uh, yeah, I, I've had various troubles, um... I meant to do the ankle cast earlier this week, but it snowed like crazy here. Uh, but at specific times, too. It didn't snow like in the afternoon and then stop. It didn't snow late at night. It snowed right at morning commute time. And because of that, morning commute was a disaster. For three days in a row it did this. Monday morning I got up and I thought, oh, I'll cast today, and no because I got in the car and the, the roads were crazy and traffic was bad and I had to pay attention. And then the same thing happened on Tuesday, same thing on Wednesday, on Thursday, I don't know. I don't remember what happened on Thursday, but here we are Friday. And it's Friday, February 1st. Um, and uh, I'm doing my ankle cast. It's been a month now since I did that first ankle cast on my way to work on New Year's Day, and uh, a month since I set those goals of writing, and uh, the month has been pretty much a failure. It's been pretty crappy. I've done a lot of nada. A lot of nada, how about that? That's a good rhyme. Um, I did write a little bit since the last time I had an ankle cast. I, I decided that I had enough of my um, outline done that I could get started and maybe I could keep going on the outline as I also worked through the starting of the story. So I wrote like 700 words on the first scene of Sunny and Gray. Um, but yeah, I only did that, I think that was last Friday maybe that I wrote that. No, it couldn't have been last Friday. It must have been last Thursday. Um, 
And yeah, since then, it's been crappy, like really crappy. Um, my son has been very sick. My little baby boy uh, is just about to turn a year old, and he has been sick. Last weekend, starting on Thursday, he got a good fever. And he had a fever for several days in a row, which made him sleep terribly, which meant, of course, that I slept terribly because he was up waking up and crying again and again through the night. And he kept doing that all weekend long. Monday, uh, I did my podcast, stayed up late and got no sleep that night, like I always do. And then came Tuesday and I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this baby sleep in his bed and sleep good. And if I have to set up a freaking, you know, a bed on the floor of his room, I'm gonna do that and make him sleep the night in his room. So I put him to bed that night. My wife went to bed and yeah, the baby woke up at 9.30 and then he woke up at 10 and then he woke up at 10.15. And then he woke up at 10.30 and 10.45 and 11. And he, oh my gosh, he woke up constantly. There was one time that I remember I put him to bed and I went and got into my bed at about like 10.58. And by 11.08, he was back awake. So I have just been freaking beat for the last week. I know it's not a really good excuse as to why I'm not writing and getting stuff done, um, but oh my gosh, have I been beat. So tired. Um, barely able to just stay awake uh, to drive all the way to and from work. I don't know if anybody else has that problem, but oh my gosh, it's like a car is a sleeping pill for me sometimes so tired always in the cars when I'm not in the car I'm fine it's good that I do this podcast in the car because it keeps me from falling asleep I guess um so anyways yeah and on top of that yeah my wife came to me with this so uh we're doing this video for the youth group that I work with and uh I need you to edit the video it's one of those things that happens and I I suppose like people that are plumbers or you know that kind of a thing that have like a really useful skill probably get it way worse where their family and their friends and their neighbors are all like hoping that they can get them to come over and like fix their sink for a good deal or for free uh oh can you help me out with this thing my sink's unclogged come over and have dinner at our house and then you can unclog your sink or something like that i don't know what it's like but yeah, being the guy that does video production, um, I get volunteered for that kind of stuff fairly often. Not too often, because I'm a jerk, and everybody knows to steer clear of me, but uh, it still happens often enough, and yeah, my wife volunteered me to edit this video. Actually, two videos, which she shot herself, which I wonder if I would have saved a lot of time despite the extra time that I would have had to put into it if I'd shot it myself because, you know, you know what you're doing um, and she doesn't. So, anyways, my lunch, my, my Sunday afternoon and my lunch break on Monday and Tuesday were all taken up editing this stuff. And uh, so lunch break is when I'm supposed to be doing my writing when I have the most time and but it, that didn't happen this week I didn't have the time um, but yeah I need to get up it get use the time make that time to write and write because uh, I don't know I could be a much better writer if I did much more writing I think so anyways uh, Going back to uh, what's been going on with writing uh, this week, I was thinking, aside from what I wrote on Sunny and Gray, I've been thinking uh, on my drive to and from work uh, while I'm stuck in the snow, I was thinking about an old story that I wrote that was called The 10th Album. It was a story about, uh, I came up with it when I 
well, okay, let, let me take you back on how the story goes. Basically, I grew up a uh, big fan of rock and roll. I loved uh, many rock and roll artists, particularly uh, Van Halen was one of the artists that I really enjoyed. I loved that band. I had all of their albums. Uh, when For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge came out, I was at the record store the, more, the day that it was released at the time that the record store opened at 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I actually went in and got a tape that was the, the employees of the record store were still unpacking the boxes that had the Van Halen For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge albums uh, still in the boxes. And so I grabbed a cassette tape of that album before it ever even actually went on the shelf. They just handed it to me straight out of the box. Um, and yeah, I, I, just, I love Van Halen. I listen to that album endlessly. Um, but the funny thing is, their next album came out, Balance, and I was not in the country. I was in South America, and I never even heard a whisper of Van Halen. I don't know if people cared about it there or not, but I didn't hear anything about it. Um, and I wasn't here in the U.S. to hear anything about it, to hear the songs from it, to hear, oh, hey, Van Halen's coming out with a new album. Wow, it's their 10th album, and it's so exciting, and woohoo! And see the interviews on TV, and etc. any of that crap. I didn't see any of that stuff. I don't know if there was any of that stuff, because, of course, I think the album came out in 95, which was, like, well into probably the height of the grunge era you know people cared about nirvana they cared about uh uh you know pearl jam or Soundgarden. you know when they had a new album they cared but they weren't uh so excited i don't think anymore about whether van halen had a new album or not but uh it was just interesting because when i came back i i didn't get into rock and roll again. I got into grunge and into alternative and and never cared about rock and roll for a long time. It was like 10 years before I ever even started going back to some of the old albums that I'd listened to when I was in high school. And uh, then just a couple of years ago, I re got the uh, a copy of Balance and listened to it for the first time and it was a really strange experience it was as if I had been you know transported to a, another dimension where you know instead of Van Halen dying um, they had lived on and done this other album and uh, you know and I and then I'd not known about it and here I was in this other alternate dimension, getting to listen to the alternate dimension version of uh, Van Halen. But the funny thing was, that, you know, it wasn't that. It was just that I'd been out of the country and uh, they didn't really die. They just kind of disappeared because nobody cared about their style of music anymore. Um, but that got me thinking and had me, uh, gave me the idea for a story, which I called the 10th album. Um which is about a guy who is from another universe and he comes into a record store and he finds this album, Balance, on the shelves and he's like, what the heck? Van Halen died in a plane crash. They never had this album. Where did this album come from? And the guy at the record store is just like, what are you talking about? Van Halen didn't die. They, they, they're, I mean, they fell apart and haven't made anything good, but they didn't die. They're all still alive. Um, and so, yeah, I had this story that kind of started with that. And uh, I wrote this story, and I was done. I mean, I'm done with the story, but I was never happy with the story, the way it turned out. I really liked the first half of the story, but the second half of the story seemed like it was missing something important. And I sent it off to various people to read, and some of the people just said, you know, what you really need is some more conflict or something like that, because it's just not, 
you're not putting your your characters through enough and and it's totally true i mean the the two characters meet the the different universe characters meet and then they go and they do their thing and no obstacles stand in their way whatsoever and then the story's over which is i don't know why i even bothered to write a story with that kind of a plot (laughs) but uh it seems pretty obvious that it needs something um, and just recently this week while I've been driving in the snow the idea came to me what I needed for the obstacles uh, in between uh, these people and their ultimate goal and so I printed out the story and I read through it and made some notes on it and I think I'm going to rewrite parts of it so that I can have uh, a story that I'm happy with um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about doing this too and so uh, fairly soon there will be the new and improved version of the 10th album and uh, I will make that available to anybody who's interested when I finish writing it and you can read it over and tell me what you think and give me any uh, thoughts on it and uh, I'll probably even have us do it on the Dune Steve as uh, one of our episodes um and uh, we'll see how that goes so uh yeah so i'm working on that working on sunny and gray sunny and gray is gonna be a really long story i can tell it may it's gonna be at least a novella and it may even end up being a novel before i'm done i don't know how many words it's gonna wind up but uh i can see it being very long Um, I know some people gave me some comments on how they thought I should write it or uh, some suggestions on, yeah, maybe you could do this or you could do that. Um, I thought I would fill in a little bit on the story structure of that story just so you guys get a kind of an idea of what's coming and what it's going to be like. Um, In the story, Rob, Robert Gray, or Bobby Gray, as he's known at the start of the story, goes to that glade and is bit by a fairy so that he can see fairies um and that's the first scene of the story is that and then it's almost like a life story of the friendship the relationship between rob and the fairy whose name is sunny or sunflower is her long version of her name but anyways rob and sunny um have this relationship they start out as rob's kid and Sunny is basically a kid, too, because she is a fairy. She doesn't know anything about humans, anything about mortality, about real life. Um, And so they learn a little bit from each other. Rob learns about being a fairy. Sunny learns about being a human. And all the knowledge that she learns eventually changes her to where she just becomes a human. And uh, that period is kind of like the first third of the album of the album the first third of the story and uh maybe even more maybe like the first 40 percent of the story and then he takes her back with him to the human world she becomes more and more human she becomes his wife and they become they have a family and their life moves on and she becomes so very human that you can't tell her apart from a typical uh suburban housewife etc and uh their life you know their relationship kind of goes downhill uh you know they they get too busy with other things and the kind of stuff that happens to suburban housewives and house husbands how how, i don't know what the opposite of that would be suburban husbands whatever uh you know they get into all the various things and they get so busy and then they don't spend time with each other and they grow apart and sunny becomes so very human that eventually she can't see fairy things at all rob discovers this and realizes that or thinks that he has ruined her and that's why their relationship is on the rocks not because they don't communicate but you know because of this other thing 
And so he decides he needs to go on the quest to save their relationship and save Sunny by returning her to being a fairy. And so this quest, that's like the next 40% of the story. And then the final bit is this quest when he goes to to uh, do that. Um, and uh, that bit is, you know, just the last 20%. It's like the big finale. It's... Rish called it the attack on the Death Star. You know, it's just the last bit of the story. So that gives you an idea of what kind of a story uh, it's going to be. Uh, that's, you know, kind of addressing some people's comments. Like Marshall was uh, asking me how I would tell it with flashbacks or what. And, I, you know, now you know. I want to tell it like this, like I said. So that's coming, but I think that's going to be a slow thing. So I think what I want to do just to feel like I'm accomplishing things beyond that is write uh, a little on that story and a little on other short stories um, at the same time. Hopefully I can manage that. I'm a freak. I can't even manage to write right now. So I've got to, I guess, jump that hurdle first. But, uh, but yeah, so it's been a month. Did I get 20,000 words in this month? I did not. I got no 1,000 words. I almost got 1,000 words, but I didn't even get that. Did I get 5,000 words a week? Any week this week, this month, I did not. I didn't get two stories written like I should have. Um, so I'm kind of failing pretty miserably on my goals. But today's February 1st. First. First. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, that's traditionally the day that people make new month resolutions is on the first of the month. So I'm going to make a new month resolution that I'm going to get back to my New Year's resolutions and I'm going to uh, achieve them. So starting today, February 1st, I'm going to write and I'm pledging to you now that I will not go to bed tonight until I have sat down and written 700 words on Sunny and Gray or on the 10th album. One of those two stories will get 700 words today. And I will do it again tomorrow. And Sunday's the Super Bowl, so hopefully I can do it that day, but I don't make any guarantees because the Super Bowl is more important to me than my birthday um, in most times although to tell you the truth my uh i'm not excited about this year's super bowl because both of the teams are not teams that i like or even kind of like you know where i can say oh yeah i'll root for this team or that team i dislike them both i think maybe i'm rooting for the ravens um but i don't even know if i can do that haven't been as unexcited about a Super Bowl since the last time the Ravens were in the Super Bowl when they played the Giants. Because I hate the Giants, too. Man, it's hard for me to deal with this. But I will write. That's what I'm going to do, write every day. I think I could still get in some writing before the Super Bowl comes on. Uh, if, I, if I get on it and get it early. Or maybe I can do it way late after it's over and everybody's gone home. Um... Yes, I am pledging to get on it, to ride on both of those things. And I think within just probably three days or so of um, riding, I will be able to uh, have the 10th album done and ready for folks to look at. So look for it. This week, hopefully, I'll have it done. And one thing that I'm also going to start doing... Every day, I mean to plan, to post a blog post that talks about what my daily writing uh, word count was. Um, I'm planning on putting that out every day. And if I don't put it out, get on my case. And maybe I can get some of those uh, little widgets on the side of my blog where they talk about, you know, my progress towards my goal or something like that. And... Uh, I think they have some of those kind of things that you can just plug in there. I think I've used them before, actually. And, uh, yeah, we'll just plug those things in. And uh, 
that way you can get a little bit of a visual representation of it too so that'd be cool so yeah oh big things coming up here the big anklevich's life and the big anklevich explains everything blog and the ankle cast podcast watch for them all and one last thing this is the fourth podcast of the ankle cast so i should now be able to submit this to itunes and uh, then you should be able to uh, be able to just get on there and get the feed and and uh, you know get the ankle cast downloaded easier we'll see how that goes all right well i will see you guys again next time i will try to make sure that i get another podcast within about a week i think monday i'll try to do on monday mornings maybe the podcast although i'm not sure i need to figure out a day of the week that i'm going to do it every week but anyways look for it again in about seven days talk to you later folks